Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Today's video is gonna be like a calm, just like talk through why I show you some background footage of some of my uh, tasks I do. Um, so right now you're looking at my 29 gallon aquarium. Um, you can see there's a nice amount of fish in there, mostly tetras, so mostly light bio load fish. Um, and that's kind of how I like to keep it. I am thinking about taking out the glow light tetras, which I think there's only like four of those guys in there. Um, and putting them into a 15 gallon tall um, because I just don't think they're doing as best as they could be doing in that tank. They're one of the oldest residents in there, but I think they get picked on the Daniels quite a bit. Um, they still look good. They don't have any like nip fins or anything because they hold their ground pretty well, but I just think it would be better for them to, you know, be in a tank where they're pretty much the cajon of everything um and you'll see my 15 gallon tall later in the video um and then you can see i have some amber tetras there's about nine of those in there um they're the reason why we have the little pre-sponge on there because they used to get sucked to the side of it and pass away learn to fix that problem really quickly <laughs> um and then we have some daniels we have both zebra and leopard Daniels. The leopard ones seem to be more calm and laid back compared to the zebra ones. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but one of the biggest ones in there that's kind of picking at everybody on the side closer to the air bubbler. Um, that one is a zebra Daniel and he or she, I think it's a she, um, she loves to pick on anybody that goes over there. You can't really, you can kind of see it in this footage. Um, I had some better footage, I just see, I have to see if I can find it, um, of her really like chasing anything and everybody that goes over there. She's always been protective of the corner, I have no idea why. Um, then you see my Garami. I always get confused about what specific type of Garami this is. I call it the Tiger Blue Garami, um, but it's a Garami nevertheless. Um, pretty peaceful, a little on the Shire side, honestly, um, but nevertheless, nice centerpiece fish. Um, then you see some of my favorite fish ever, the Albino Corridoras. Um, there's a nice school of them down there. They continuously try to breed, and you're going to see some of that in the next footage as well. Um, but their breeding is never successful, as in, like, the eggs don't fully develop. Because somebody eats them. And I think... I think it might be on the little auto singles that you see in the corner. I don't know why, but when the lights first turn on, the auto singles always removes himself from, like, all the plant and greenery and kind of places himself off to the side. And I always find that kind of bizarre. And then he'll go back in there and clean leaves and clean rocks, whatever he does. So um, this also is a little bit of older footage. You see a little gold uh, mystery still in the corner. That is no longer alive. Um, we do have a black one or ivory one that is alive and currently doing well, um, or at least doing decent. Um, I had them both in here at the same time, but only once arrived. So here are the little corridors trying to breed, and this female has her little egg depositing sack, um, and all the little white dots you see on everywhere in the glass are eggs, um, and they've, they've just never really developed. And this tank, on the other hand, I have the, I call them pea quarries, um, I can never say the name, Pocosimus, Capocus, I, I don't know it, how to pronounce it, um, but I'm right here, I'm applying a water change, I'm actually refilling it up, um, and here I have four of the pea quarries, you're going to see them. When they come out um they actually have bred they were my first quarries to ever breed again i wasn't trying to purposely breed anybody um but they just bred one day and since there is auto cyclist in here too um but these eggs actually hatched um at least some of them did um at the end of the day i think only two babies survived because i only ever seen two at a time and this was a couple of weeks ago now i'm only seeing one so i think we just have one baby he's about a month or two old, but it's still really small. I don't feed heavily, so I'm guessing it's just growing really slowly. Um, but you can see him or her every now and then. But other than that, other than that, there. Um, this is where my bed used to be in. Um, my bed did pass away a while ago. So this tank just has four corridors and then that fifth baby. Um, 
and two apple snails and the auto i think i think the auto's still alive i mean the auto was alive for the longest of time um so i don't know why i wouldn't be alive and he was doing fine so an auto in there and that's it it's a 15 gallon column tank but yeah um to do water change i just use the siphoner i take all the siphoner pieces apart and reconfigure them um and i use a pump a water pump that i get off amazon Put the pump in the bucket take the tube out connect the tube to the pump and just pour it in there it makes it so easy i don't have to lift up buckets mess up water anything like that literally a life changer So I actually did finally receive my isopods. I don't know if you guys, I've told you about them quite yet, but um, they're orange scaper Priscilio. I think I said the name right. Um, and so far they're doing pretty good. I picked up a piece of cuddle bone yesterday and there's like a ton of babies there. So they're doing pretty great. I've had them for a little bit under, I wanna say two weeks, um, or two and a half weeks, something like that. They're moving on to a month. Um, I got it from this company. <laughs> I don't know how to say the name properly, so I'm just going to show you everything and show you all the information. Sorry for my blue nail. Um, I was eating some blue diet chips, and that's what happened. I also finally got a response and a new shipment of isopods. Not isopods, um, springtails. So I did get them from Josh's Frogs. That was the company I had my issues with. Um, and we worked everything out pretty simply. Um, I got a refund. I reordered from them. This shipment is proving to be just fine on um, the springtails of breeding they're there they came alive again i just want to specify that them arriving dead wasn't the problem for me i understand these things happen you're shipping live animals things pass away things don't survive travel etc like i understand that um but um, and i also understand sometimes things get contaminated you get pests etc um like i said earlier i didn't exactly know where the pest came from it just made most sense that it came from them since at the time that was the only new thing I in invited into the setup. Um, but I'm still not 100% sure it was them, so I can't blame them necessarily for anything. I did point it out just in case it could have been them. Um, so they can check their supplies and whatever and just, you know, double check to see if anything could have been wrong. Um, but if I made it seem like that in the past, I didn't mean to make it seem like I was fully blaming them for my pest issue. Like it generally might not have been them at all. Um, but just based on coincidence and timing, it could have been them. Um, and it just made sense that it was them at the time. But um, I never fully said, yes, you guys gave me these insects and da 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 da. Um, so that's that. But everything was resolved pretty quickly and simply. Customer service was great. A little low, a little slow in responding. But um, nevertheless, it was cool. It was fine. Um, and I enjoyed the experience. And I would order for them again with no hesitation. Um, the second when they sent it out again, sent it out right, no problems, no situations, no nothing. Um, even came a day earlier um, than it was supposed to, so that was amazing. Um, other than that, no negative thoughts or anything on this company. I do have a couple more updates, but this video is already long enough, so I'm going to stop it here. It wasn't meant to be a very long video. Um, it's basically the only updates I have are on the frog, specifically the frog. Um, I don't know why I said that twice. Um, she was going through a couple of health issues. Um, I think we've got them solved, so the frog is fine um, and is okay. Um, but I do want to update and kind of talk about it a little bit, but I'll do that in the next edition to this video. Um, but hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully it was entertaining to watch, at least the background. Um, yes, this was footage from earlier, but I needed something else to do um, a voiceover to. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoyed the fish. I do want to add more plants to this tank. It's just really difficult, and I'll talk about that in a, in a video of and up in itself. I don't, know, I don't know why I'm struggling to talk on its own, because um, I want to add more plants to all my aquariums, but I'm just struggling with plants at the moment. But um, yeah, thank you for watching. One more thing. I do hope to have the new setup completely ready for the frog within the next week and a half to two weeks. I'm waiting for the springtails to breed a little bit more and to get their populations kind of up. So I could add some of them into the enclosure. Right now, they're kind of on low population status. And I still want to keep that as like the mother culture. So I'm not trying to remove all of them and put them in the new setup. I want to have some on standby. So hopefully within a week to a week and a half.